All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, and we're back to more Kingdom Come Deliverance, that game where you stab people as some type of weird feudal blacksmith peasant lad. Uh, last episode, we lost our parents Batman style because our dear home of Scalitz was pretty much obliterated by some people that came in from this hill over here. They rolled up here and murdered everybody in the town and lit these places on fire. Murdered our parents over here by this thing. And then we ran around the backside of this little keep and tried to escape without getting murdered. Uh, yeah, it was exciting. I died over here because apparently zigzagging around the enemy is actually a lot harder than just going right up to them, smacking them on the butt and then saying, ha ha. And then, you know, going along this long route over here to Talmbergs. This is where we're at. I got an arrow in my butt, and then the, the guard captain man came and fixed me. I think when we last left off, I was sleeping, and the lady of the manor came in and started to uh, get wild and freaky with me. With, with her word mouth. Whole place. And we shared some stories. It was sad. We, uh, we shared some life bonding experience. And now, what do I have to do? Do I have to go sleep? I know I'm getting hungry, so maybe I should eat something. Let's have one of the 50 apples that I stole. Because, to hell with these people and their kitchen, it's all mine now. I'll eat like 15 apples until I'm about to throw up, and then let's pick up this torch. Alright, so if, if you need a, a light at night, use your torch by pressing... Either the one button or the I button. I'm gonna go with one because I is inventory. Okay, so duly noted that the the font for the keyboard buttons is maybe a little iffy. Uh, what's my objective? What's Jay say? So I already was in here when Lady Stefani came and we said some words and she got me all boozed up like Larry likes. And then now I need to go to get to the battlements via the main castle gate. Okay, so I guess that means that... How do I get out of here? This is locked. This is someone's room. I, I can't seem to steal things. You know what? It is nighttime. There's nobody who can see me. Let's go see if we can't rob some shit. Oh, everything's locked in here. Even the cheap, like... The cheap foot lockers that are in the stables. Of all the places to have proper locks, this tiny keep is the one place. Yeah, everything in here is locked. I don't know that I want to try my hand at lockpicking necessarily in the middle of somebody else's keep. There's some people sleeping. Oh, they look they're so, they're so, so gentle and fragile. It'd be a shame if someone were to club them with a torch and light them on fire. No, Larry. St avoid- avoid the homicide! You're here to get revenge on the mustache man. So wait, no, I'm looking for the main tower gate. I feel like it's not up here. So this is the main gate to this place. I'd figure the battlements stairs- here it is. Would be a little bit in the open to some degree. Hello, gentlemen. Nice night for some parent that. death revenge, wouldn't not you say? Uh, I'm looking for the captain of the guard, I would imagine. I think they were saying that something was going on in here and that I needed to come and be present because of some sweet shenanigans. Alright, this is the Lord with some gentle texture popping that is freezing my game currently. Kingdom come. Hello. Please. There we go. Oh, okay, that's that's better. Okay, don't look at the Lord directly in the eyes. It breaks her game. So here is Sir Robard. Are we- wait, are we about to be attacked? I mean, by the Gru from Don't Starve Together, maybe. All right, Robard, what do you know? What's going on? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Why would Sigismund advance on Talmurg in the night? Especially since he's lost the element of surprise after the raid on Scalitz. Maybe it's not him. Then who is it? The scouts Jivish sent to Scalitz to spy on Sigismund, 
said he'd set up camp and was getting ready to storm the castle. And Sir Radzig is an experienced soldier. He'd surely hold the castle for quite some time. It doesn't make sense. What else did the spies see? Not much of anything. Before they could get close enough, this huge storm started. And you were right. Sigismund has a hell of a lot of soldiers, including all manner of mercenaries. An army like that costs a fortune. Well, anyway, we'll find out when they get here, won't we? Aye, we will. Wow, that was oddly chipper for a town full of people that's smaller than the one that was already obliterated. Or seemingly smaller. Maybe these are refugees. Halt! Who goes there? Lucifer and all his minions! Who else, Robert? Sir Radzik! What a relief! Hey, Radzik probably wants his sword now. Yes, sir, he is right here. What are you doing up so late, Divish? At your age, you need a good night's sleep. <laughs> well, Radzik, you didn't exactly pick the best time for an outing either. In a big hurry? It was a bit of a scramble, all right. Believe it or not, this tempest is a godsend for me and my men. As my old granddad used to say, better a sore throat than a slit throat. I'd say your grandfather was a wise man. Your messenger told us what happened. Messenger? The lad you sent to warn us. He's alive? He made it to you. He's here with me. He only got away by the skin of his teeth, though. Go Is this where I go out and go like, Hi, hey, it's me! But tell me, friend. How on earth did you manage to get away? Thank God for this tempest. When it began, Sigismund's Tatars crawled into their holes and left a storm in the castle for more clement weather. We were able to sneak out right under their noses. The Lord be praised. We wouldn't have stood a chance against them. Would you like to spend the night in Tumber? No, no. When Sigismund finds the castle empty tomorrow, he might come looking for us. We'd only be exposing you to danger. Without me and my men, he has no call to attack you. Well, what will you do then? We'll march to Ratai. It's only a short way, and there we'll have a better chance of defense and enough room for all of these people. If Sigismund should come, better bend your knee, Divish. There's no point dying in a battle that's futile. You're right there. Is that boy still with you? I'm here, sir. You have courage, lad. That I can't deny. I am sorry about what happened. Would you care to join us? I'd like to, sir, but first I have to return to Scalitz. Are you mad? What do you want there? I can't leave my mother and father. I won't leave their corpses rotting in the street. I'll join you once I've taken care of them. Don't even think of going back there, you donkey. Are you tired of living? But sir! Quiet! I'm sorry about your father, but getting killed as well won't help him. Divish, make sure that lad doesn't budge from Talmberg until things quieten down. Not to worry, friend. Anyway, he's injured and needs to recover. I'll lock him up here as if he were Havel of Baldic. <laughs> I've seen you've grown a thick skin since your tribulation, sir. But thank you. We'll meet again when circumstances are more favorable. Farewell. Farewell, friend. And good fortune. Give my regards to Sir Hanish. I will. And good luck to you and your people, too. These are dark times. Move out! All right, well, at least some people survived. I guess that's good. I mean, no, nobody that we know. Most of our friends were probably killed in that little town area, but, you know. Dad, tonight we'll have triple patrols. Sort out the watches between you as always. And if I catch anyone boozing, playing dice, or slacking off, I'll personally break every bone in his body. I want you to keep a close eye on everything nearby. Sigismund will surely have sent spies and likely men as well to follow the Scalitz people, now he knows they've fled. Keep your eyes peeled, and report everything to me at once. Understood? Well, I will say, this keep is a little bit more impressive than the last one, even if the town doesn't technically look as big. Because let's look here. So Scalitz kind of had, like, a small keep that had, like, a courtyard people could hide in. And it's relatively large in comparison. I think it's because it's like a mining town or something. 
Rovna is just kind of fucked. And then this one's got like a proper dual keep thing going on where we've got our bed and everything. And I guess we'll be spending a fair bit of time here. We gotta talk to Robard again. Hey, buddy, what's up? What is it you need? I could use an extra pair of eyes, and yours are keen. Will you keep watch on the battlements with my men? Is that a request or an order? I'd rather it was a request you answered yes to. Of course I'll help. I have to pay you back somehow after all you've done for me. Splendid. And don't worry. I'll tell the men to relieve you later. So... How Be does... More careful. Do I seriously have to sit here on the battlements and watch out there? Oh boy. I hope you guys are ready for a half hour of this, because it's going to be real. So how does this work? Sir Robert Robard didn't want to leave anything to chance. He posted extra guards on the battlements and ordered me to join them. All right. Keep watch on the battlements. So does that... I mean, obviously that involves looking out, not in. Because if someone's already in the keep stabbing folk, there's probably not a lot I'm going to do besides watch all the other guards beat the ever-loving shit out of them. You feel quite hungry. But I, you know, I could be wrong. So yeah, I guess I literally just wander about talking with people, learning about my true self. Is there a zoom feature I don't know about where I can, like, hit control and peer, like, strongly at a person? Maybe I'm supposed to look around and see if anyone's getting killed in the nighttime. And if I see something, I'm like, yo, Robard, I just saw a guy get murdered. The shit murdered out of him. It was, uh, whoa, it was not the best. Okay, maybe I was one battlement too, too short. Wandering around like a stray sheep must be your first watch, eh? I don't think anything much will be happening today. You can just lean against the wall and wait till morning. I'll show you what's what. I will. Thank you. Alright. When when you say you'll show me what's what, what what exactly are you implying, sir? Okay, so it's kinda like a Bethesda game. You can you can hit T to wait for stuff, which is nice. So let's see here. Tiredness and waiting. If Henry is tired, his stamina and speech will also decrease. The solution to tiredness is sleep. It's best to find an available bed. We recommend renting or buying one in an inn. Because sleeping in other people's beds can get you into trouble. You can also sleep at one of the many camps. But sleeping somewhere in the woods certainly isn't restful as getting a good night's sleep and a bed in a good inn. Places you can sleep can easily be seen on the map. To sleep, you first sit on the bed using E, then launch sleep. Yeah, alright, that's... I guess I can just wait here then. All right, I guess we'll wait till morning. I, we were already pretty much through the night time, it looks like, before What's-Her-Face woke us up, so that's kind of nice. And then I guess that rune there that's circled in the sunny part is noon-ish. But only ish-mish. All right, there we go. I guess I can put this away. Put that weapon away before. Okay, apparently one is used for two things that I would not necessarily say is a good combination. Putting your flashlight away versus taking a sword out and pissing off everybody in the room is probably a really bad idea. What is it? Oi, I'm looking outside here. You watch your own shit. I'll have to get something to eat. I'm starting to get hungry. Oh. Didn't I just eat like 15 apples? What the hell, man? Good thing I got like 37 pieces of food that I stole. Alright, that- I guess that takes care of hunger for a bit. So what's my current objective? I can close my eyes and rest a while. If anything ha happens, the soldiers will wake me. 
Well, it's it's already morning, so what's the deal? Like, I can clearly see daytime is happening slowly. I guess this is very particular on what counts as daytime. Well, we could wait another hour. Let's do that. Then it'll be thoroughly from, like, dawn into day. Oh, stuff is happening. Is is there fighting? Are there people? How do you see sh- Oh, okay. We gotta go. Go to the battlements in the- of the outer bailey. Where is the outer bailey? How do you get to there? Is this through the door? Okay, so this is like a mini fort outside the main keep for the rest of the important -y people. Oh boy! Oh, this is gonna go great! self-appointed king wins the love and respect of his loyal subjects. Indeed, Robard. Sigismund of Luxembourg has a rare talent for winning people over to his cause. You may be in for a surprise. I don't think he will set his heathen dogs on us today. Greetings, Lord of Tomberg. <laughs> That's the bastard who let the attacker skull it and kill my parents. Don't be an idiot. Do you want to I'm gonna have to write this guy's name down and give him a good stabbing. I am Sir Mark Vart von Aulitz. I come in the name of Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary and Croatia, who has resolved to strike against those who disrupt Concord in the land and to restore order in the name of his brother, King Wenceslaus IV. Restore order by burning and pillaging the king's estates. Greetings, Sir Markvart. The efforts of the king's brother to bring order to this chaotic land are undoubtedly noble. It seems to me, though, that he and his army have somewhat strayed. As Burgrave of Prague Castle, I am entirely beholden to the king, and here in Townburg, divine peace reigned until your arrival. To what then do we owe the honor of your visit? Yesterday, His Majesty took action against the enemy of the kingdom, Sir Ratzik Kobila, who has been using the silver from the Scarlet's mine to fund insurrection against the crown. Unfortunately, the insurgent escaped. Would you happen to know, noble sir, where he might be at this time? As far as I know, the Sir Radzik, of which you speak, is the king's hetman at Scalitz. I find it hard to imagine that he would rebel against our king. Nevertheless, I can assure you that Sir Radzik is not at Talberg. He would be a fool indeed to flee from one castle, where he has little chance of defense, to another, where he has even less. Or do you take the view that my humble manner is any obstacle to your army? Am I to inform the king then that the Razzi Kobila is not a Tamburg and that he has your loyalty? Sir Radzi Kobila is not here, and I have no intention of getting embroiled in affairs from which I have nothing to gain. Very well, sir. As you wish. I will relay your words to the king in the hope he will be as well disposed as you seem to be. Those who have clean consciences and goodwill may find themselves well disposed even at moments like this, when there is little cause for joy. Farewell, sir. Auf Wiedersehen. Well, that went about as well as you could expect, unless he's going to pull a double cross and kill all of us.
All right, well, I guess I was right. You do need at least a few peasants and nobles still alive to run your country after you're done taking it over. My lord, you have my utmost admiration. Get on with you, Robard. Well, he's wearing armor, and I hear that if you want to kill the shit out of an asshole wearing armor, you're gonna need yourself a mace. And then he's gonna have a really bad day! And I have written down... Sir Markov... Markov... Of all it's... On my little notepad for murdering the shit out of him later. Okay, so now I can bury my loved ones at Scarlet's, talk to Sir Robard, and get a horse. In that order, perhaps? No, so first talk to Sir Robard. Okay. Well, he, he, do, he walked off this way. I'm sure he's still available. He's hanging out with the Lord. Lord, what's his butt? Robard, you're a pretty cool guy. Do you, uh, you want to let me borrow my horse that I stole back Jesus since Christ it's neither of ours? Actually, we got a lot of options here. I suppose we probably want to ask most of them before we're done here. Sir Robard, I need to get to Scalitz. What would you do there, lad? Sigismund might have left, but the place will be swamped with robber barons, brigands, deserters, and other vermin. And anyway, your lord commanded you to stay here. All right, well, I do have to bury my parents, and my best stat here is probably being... This? So this actually makes sense that I wouldn't have a feel for this guy yet, because I don't know him very well. I'm clearly not going to intimidate a man in full plate armor who could kill my ass with one swing of his mace, so let's not do that. Sir Robard, my parents died there. I can't leave them to be eaten by dogs. What would you do in my place? Sorry, lad, but I won't take orders. You'll have to wait until everything settles down, and maybe your lord will change his mind. Why did Sigismund burn down Scalitz and then come here, too? That's war for you, lad. Certain lords have resolved to take things into their own hands and eliminate anyone who doesn't share their view. Unfortunately, Sir Radzig is one of those. And what's more, he was sitting on a pile of silver that could help King Wenceslas' allies. See, that makes a lot more sense, because I wasn't really certain... They might have mentioned it initially in the opening sequence, what they were mining, but it just looked like they could have been mining anything from coal to iron. So it makes sense, because they gotta fund the war effort to take back control of the Empire. Although you'd think you'd stage an elaborate murder of Wenceslas, so that you could just replace him, but I don't know. I didn't grow up in a feudal period, and thank God for that. What happened in Gutenberg? Gutenberg? Well... I'm just a simple soldier, but the good lord gave me ears, and I've heard some things from Sir Divish and from those who fled from Sigismund's pillaging. Were there many? Indeed, but it was the Kutenberg mercenaries who came to see me, because I knew them from before. I see. Listen, lad, these are all games of the high aristocracy. In Prague, a cabal of nobles rebelled against King Wenceslas, wealthy aristocrats who took against our king for reasons of their own. There's no doubt Sigismund had his fingers in the whole affair. Him and Wenceslas's cousin, Jobst. And that cabal helped him abduct the king. So then why did Sigismund attack Kuttenberg? Why do you think? Huh. Really, all of these reasons could be a pretty strong reason to take over a town. You need a good, strong foothold in the area with good fortifications. Insurgent lords might be less of an issue when you have that big of an army, but feeding his troops is a bet is a pretty good bet. Because it's a fertile place with full granaries that could feed Sigismund's troops? <laughs> That's not it. King Charles, may God grant him eternal glory, built Prague into a proper royal city, while King Wenceslas took a liking to Kutenberg. After Prague, it's the most important city in Bohemia in the entire Holy Roman Empire. 
He who commands the Kutenberg silver is king. So Kutenberg sided with Wenceslas because he favored it. Now you're starting to understand. When Sigismund imprisoned Wenceslas and took control of Prague, the people of Kutenberg began to raise an army against him. So with the attack on Kutenberg, Sigismund killed two birds with one stone. He defeated Wenceslas's most powerful allies before they could stand against him and also gained immense wealth. Huh, yeah, all right. Where did these humans come from anyway? I don't know much about them, only what the Chamberlain said, that they came to Hungary from the east and settled there. They're godless barbarians and merciless fighters. The nobles used to say the Hungarian king shouldn't enlist them because they dishonor our rules of warfare. But when there's power and money to be had, it seems that honor isn't worth my spit. And believe me, it's always about power and money. You know, that's actually really accurate to today. And then, I mean, to be fair, also, I'm really, really dirty from just chilling out for two hours outside. Um, to be fair, like, when it comes down to it, rules of warfare only matter if someone's able to punish you. If you can kill everyone else, it doesn't really matter. So what, do I just steal a horse again? You learned Jobst of Morv Moravia. Hey. Oh, shut up, you stupid guard. So current objective. Get out of the castle. And then bury dead people. Optional, steal a horse, and then don't come back here because everyone will want to kill your ass for stealing a horse. But, because this place just pledged to that other guy, Wenceslas' half-brother, the rebellious king who's a bit of a dick. Although, I guess, I guess they're both kind of assholes. One because he's trying to take over the realm from Hungary, and the other one for being a lecherous butthole. Um... Either way, we're not going to have to come back here because we're a Wenceslas lad and we don't have to mess around with none of this business. They've pledged to the other guys. So they'll mind their own P's and Q's. So how do I get out of the castle? This guy's not letting me out. I could just leap over the side like a crazy person. Eh, that is actually not a bad drop. That is actually, you could just climb in here and kill everybody. Come on. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm not a prisoner, I'm people. Alright, that was surprisingly easy. Maybe I should have been sneakier, but I don't... I don't necessarily know what's gonna make NPCs respond one way or the other in this game yet, so whatever. I feel like there's only so much they're gonna chase after one hell-bent-for-leather dumbass who wants to go bury people who have probably already been horrifyingly mutilated. So if I was going to be a horse, where would I hide? I came into town from over here. There's an activity giver, an unexplored place. Uh, I'm not really sure where you'd find a horse in here, to be honest with you. I mean, this could be a stable up here, but then I'd have to run all the way back through town and risk getting arrows in the ass. I'll just look around. All they can do is chase my ass more. Hey! Hey! No, all right, fuck it. Well, that... You. That was way... Wait. Jesus, you gave me the runaround. What do you mean, gave you the runaround? You walked Let two feet, you butthole. I have to bury my parents. You're going nowhere. Just fucking Except book it, dumbass. Inside. If I don't bury them now, they'll be ripped to pieces by jackdaws and scattered over unhallowed ground. And I'm stuck here, a stone's throw away. All right, shove me. I'll pretend you caught me off guard and I fell over. I'll deal with the others. Push his ass! Here on the double. Push him on his ass! Corva! What are you doing? Oh, well, apparently that stopped the shove button all of a sudden. All right, well, fuck it, I'm punching a guard and running like a... Oh, 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 there's more guards. How was this ever supposed to work? Okay, so, suffice it to say, I did not fully anticipate that weird cutscenes would happen when guards get within two feet of you. So that was a little bit odd. So let's try talking to this guy one more time. I'll try my speech jig majigger, 
And then we'll just see if we can't, like, run away from this place come... Maybe nightfall? I don't know. So, Robard, I need to get to Scout. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Talky Skippy. My parents died there, and I won't leave them to be ravaged by dogs. I have to bury them. Good God, boy. Do you want to throw your life? All right, well, I guess it, this is one of those back. NPCs where it doesn't matter what I do, I'm just bound yeah. to fail this. Which is fine. I already know all the rest of this stuff. So, what's the 411? I think the way that that dialogue tree works is it's kind of like in, uh, in an MMO when an, an enemy is way too high a level for you. You can't tell how powerful they are and what level they are. So in a similar rigmarole, they, uh, you can't tell what their stats are. What direction is this? Where am I right now? That is the way out of town. So can I just gently hop over this? That's really not even enough damage, like enough of a fall to really even bother my toes. In fact, to call this a defensive emplacement is probably a little generous. Let's just, let's just be real. All right, so apparently that doesn't count as a place where I can get out either. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to figure this out this episode. We're kind of getting along in the tooth for all this shenanigans. So I'll catch you next time. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe and all that nonsense. And I'll catch you next time. I've been your host, Larry. This has been more Kingdom Come stuff and butts and other things. I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.